Good morning everyone, this is TrackMan44. Today we're going to do a fun little project. There's going to be a, a couple of fittings, a couple of pieces of straight duct, and a, a drain pan for a, a small horizontal hanging air handler that I'm doing for a, a buddy of mine. We need to put a return air filter grill in the ceiling, so this is going to be attached to the back of the horizontal hanging furnace. This 90 degree is going to drop down, and then this is going to be right at the level of the drywall and we'll cut an opening in that to accept a 16 by 20 return air filter grill so that he can service the filter from downstairs. Well, the discharge of the furnace is going to be this fancy little uh, two-way transition. I don't have it drawn the way I'm going to make it yet, but I've got the dimensions there. So that's going to be a 24 inch piece that's uh, going to change dimensions. Uh, and then of course we just got a very short 8 foot trunk line because it's just a little short coupled garage and there's just going to be several uh, 6 inch runs coming off of that. It's a little 2 ton and 10 kW, so there's a very little airflow. And we're going to be making a drain pan that's going to be a finished dimension, a 23 by 47. So. Now, one thing I kind of want to clarify a lot of times, you know, every video I ever done is never thought out. I don't rehearse anything, I don't practice anything. I just wing it and just say whatever comes to mind while I'm doing the things that I'm doing. And uh, if you're like me, you, know, you realize sometimes it's very difficult to formulate your thought process whenever you're you're doing something mechanical with your hands. Uh, sometimes some things don't come out quite as intended, uh, but you know, once it's once it's down there, it's, it's down there. So one point I want to make is whenever I say all the time, well, you want to do this or you want to do that, I'm not telling you that that's what you want to do. I'm just kind of, I think that's my subconscious way of saying, this is what I do. But it kind of comes out as though you want to do this or you want to do that. Like for instance, whenever I say that, uh, you know, you want to use a, a folding tape measure. You know, there's there's many, many people out there uh, that use uh, telescoping tape, you know, just regular tape measures and do just fine, you know. Uh, so there's any number of things. And like I say, you know, you, you want to uh, uh, to pick up machinery and things like that. You don't have to do that. There's plenty of people out there that, that make everything by hand. I've been that route many, many times back in the day. I don't prefer it, and which is exactly why I started amassing my shop, getting parts and pieces together. Uh, 40 some odd years ago, 40 plus years ago, because quite frankly, I don't enjoy doing them by hand. If I had to go back to doing them, yes, I could. Do I want to do it? No, I do not. I'm not telling you that this is the way to do it or this is the what you want to do. This is the way that I want to do this particular job. Because if I do another job tomorrow, I might do it entirely different, even though it's a very similar job. The things that you do are dictated by the situation you're in on the job site. There is no one set way of doing anything at all. There are just about as many varied variances to, uh, to doing this work as there are men that do the work because there just ain't no one right way. Now in laying out the auxiliary drain pan, you're going to have four corners of that pan. So what I've done, I'm just going to draw for clarification just one of the corners on the, on the, uh, on the paper. So we know we want a half inch safety hem on it so it doesn't cut your fingers. So we're going to make a half inch scribe down all four corners, all the way around the perimeter of the cut size of the piece of metal. So there's a half inch. We want this to be a half inch deep, this particular one. So now you've got a half. So now you want to add an inch and a half to that one half. So now we're going to have a, a line two inches in from the outside edge, all the way around the perimeter, and another all the way around the four edges of the metal. Now if you look at that as though it's on all four corners, now you're ready to notch. So we know we want this to be the safety hem right here. So what we'll want to do is we'll mark that to cut off there. This is going to be the safety hem here, over here. So we'll mark this to cut off right here. We want to have a tab that will fold inside to lock the corners together. So what I'm going to do is draw a half inch tab right here. I'm just going to draw a half inch tab right here. And then the appropriate notch, which will be something like this and something like this. Now, everything else here gets cut out. If I can shade in the area, and then we'll do a close-up real quick. Bear in mind, I'm not a tinner and I ain't a lawyer. Now, if that makes any sense to you, once that focuses in, now you can see what we're going to have on four corners. We're going to have a tab, and all of this shaded area here is going to be cut out. This is going to be the edge. This is going to be the edge, inch and a half deep. This is going to be the half inch safety hem. This is going to be the half inch safety hem. This is all going to be cut out and missing. And we fold these corners up. This tab right here is going to fold underneath that safety head, 
edge right there as it folds over. It'll make sense when you see it done. Now bear in mind, once you get your cut size laid out, you don't have to measure all of those in, uh, different dimensions. You can, uh, it's fine, but if you have a homemade scribe like this, I think they sell one in the store that's uh, got all the dimensions on it just like this, except for it's just long and skinny and all of the notches are just on one side. I like this one here because you can tell at a glance which one you want to use. But at any rate, the second thing I want to point out is uh, if you're making something that happens to be an inch and a quarter deep, you don't have to measure that inch and a quarter either because your standard circumference rule, your tender circumference rule, rule measures one and a quarter inches. So if you use your scribe to make your half inch, and then off of that half inch, providing you want an inch and a quarter, you lay this on that, and you mark that as your inch and a quarter. There's no measuring there. Or if you want two inches, you can use a standard drywall square, and this is a two-inch standard dimension on virtually all standard drywall squares. So if you're making something that's two inches in total, like this one here is in particular, you can mark your two-inch line right there, take your half-inch scribe, mark a half inch off of it, you haven't measured anything. Now those tabs I was talking about, I usually don't measure those either. It's going to be a little awkward here, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you exactly what I do. I don't know that I'll stay in the camera, but I'm going to try. I just estimate the, the size of that tab. That's going to be what the tab is going to end up. There's your 180 safety, 180 safety, this is going to be your 90 degree tab that's going to fold underneath that as you fold it all together. Now we've got to duplicate that three more times. Four corners having been prepped, we're ready to go to the uh, to the break. Now what I'm going to do on this is I'm going to put one cross break, just candy wampus from one corner to the other corner and not an X brace. If I make an X cross brace uh, and the the, auxiliary, the drain pan starts collecting water because of an overflow in the, in the air handler, it'll collect to the middle and it'll take a lot longer for you to be uh, to be aware that there's a problem with the drain. So I put them candy wampus across one corner and then put the float switch in the lower corner and so any dripping will run to that corner and set your float switch much more quickly than if it has to fill up from the middle and go to the outside edge. I've already got the other three corners assembled and I'll show you the, uh, the way those tabs come into play on this very last one. If you take a look here very very closely you can see that tab is aligned right now with this hem that's folded over. We take a, any kind of an old knife and we'll open that hem just a little bit. It's just an old duck build uh, knife that's kind of dull. We'll stick that in there and open that up so that it will receive this tab. Use a nice crisp piece of steel if you're lucky enough to find one. Use that as an anvil to uh, crinkle these corners around. That'll hold it in place until you get the chance to pop rid it. And then of course use a, a, a waterproof Vulcan sealant or something like that. Or like in the old days, solder them up. And aluminum pop rivets in the corner to complete the whole thing. So now we need the urethane uh, sealant up the four edges or solder shut. Next thing we're going to do is lay out this discharge plenum. It's going to have a 90 degree hem, double hemmed flange all the way around the perimeter that will allow it to screw to the, uh, to the pl uh, furnace. The dimensions are, it requires it to be 11 half inches in width and it's going to have to be 16 and 5 eighths from top to bottom in order to attach to the furnace. And then it's going to, in 24 inches, it's going to drop down from 16 and 5 eighths to 12 and then go from 11 and a half to 10 and 3 quarters. Was going to make it 10 inches, but by converting that to 10 and 3 quarter, that allows the trunk lines down here, which are going to be 12 by 10 and 3 quarter now. It allows me to utilize the maximum amount of the material of a 24 inch sheet of metal without having to make any cuts because 12 plus 10 and 3 quarter plus one, one inch for the Pittsburgh plus a quarter for the 90 degree angle that goes into the Pittsburgh totals 24 inches. So I'm saving a set of cuts across the width of the metal or the length of the metal. Those are the things you can do to kind of streamline your, uh, your layouts or the, the thoughts in your layouts while you're, uh, while you're measuring up a job. First thing you do, you figure out what the cut size is going to be, allowing for all your flanges and everything like that. Lay out your cut size, then take your, your scribe, and then you know we're going to have a 
half inch 90 degree double hem flange so you can mark an inch turn your scribe over grab the half inch and mark the half inch mark your quarter the full length and then you go to the other end and you mark your one inch which is going to be the uh, the notch for the half inch drive tab that folds over from the outside cut that out and then what you end up with is a prepared sheet of the correct angle and the correct length in order to go from the dimensions that we wanted to start off with 16 and 5 8 down to 12 inch so we'll make both of these sides right here they're equal and then we'll make the uh, the bottom and then the top the top is going to be slightly longer because of the angle but everything else is going to be identical and at the same time we'll change that width dimension from 11 and a half to 10 and 3 quarters to compensate for the size change that I want to make to utilize the metal to the fullest advantage and the least amount of effort first thing I like to do is go ahead and get my cross break in if the material requires a cross break then I like to go for my double hem flange slide right into the half inch mark fold that up as far as it'll go give it a slap don't have to latch it completely down turn it over and get your 90 make it a crisp 90 right at the juncture of where you notched from both sides again you've got your scale over here if necessary to tell what angle you're uh, you're folding at now we'll go for the quarter inch one because of the angle it's going to leave a little bitty uh, little bitty titty in the corner we'll have to fold up uh, with a with a hammer and a block of steel always bearing in mind too that these tools are expensive and so you don't really want to slam them around now I'm kind of moving them pretty quick but when I'm throwing this back down I'm catching it up here I'm catching that counterweight so that it doesn't slam down a lot of times you see guys just slam them down and they just beat back and forth well they're tearing up their bearings their bushings and all that stuff and just doing damage to the to the machine so here's the other side bender this is a, a hand operated tool it's 18 inches in width and it uh, with, with these different dimensions of fingers across here you can get virtually any combination of drive built bent all the way up to uh, 18 inches in max you go about 18 and a half inches but you just take take the material you want to bend and find a set of slots that uh, that work for it pull up the first one leave it here go down and get the other one bring it back drop them down and just that quick you got a half inch perfect drive tab when you put it in you got to make sure it's perfectly square into it if you don't put it perfectly square in you're going to have a crooked uh, you're going to have a crooked tab there you go second perfect drive get, married or get ready to uh, make your wrappers the tops and the bottom you always want to measure the original piece that you actually laid out because you made this piece and you know the other one is going to be a mirror image so you invert it and then trace around it and then cut out the second one the second one is going to be just slightly different than the first uh, so you always want to measure the original that you laid out and you want to measure from scribe line to scribe line to get an accurate length this here we know is going to be 24 inches it's 22 from from scribe to scribe so it's going to be 24 by whatever that width is going to be it's going to be an 11 and a half up here and 10 to 3 quarter down there so we're going to have to allow for the Pittsburgh locks and then put the taper on it and then go ahead and uh, lay that out now the length on this one is going to be a little longer and it's a little more tricky measuring the angles but again go from your scribe line where your notch two notches intersected to where the two notches intersected we gain a half an inch this is 22 and one half in between the lines so it's plus one for the drive tabs plus one for the uh, for the uh, half inch double hem so that's 22 and a half plus two which is 24 and one half by whatever that width needs to be. Now a simple way to make that top angle in just a little bit is take a piece of your scrap metal that's large enough you know to get the, the much larger than the dimension of what it is that you need and find you a place in a little more than half that distance scribe you a line right here and transfer it up to somewhere up on the sheet and make you a straight line. Now come off of that straight line this one here the dimension is uh, 11 and a half is the wide part so half of 11 and a half is uh, five and three quarter so you come off of this line here five and three quarter inches and put you a mark right here come across here five and three quarter inches make your mark double check and make sure that you have eleven and a half inches which we do now the total distance away is twenty four and a half inches 
so up here on that center line right here, uh, to make sure that you have an equal taper, that's why you have to have that center line. So on that center line up here, you take half of the dimension you want to transform to, that's 10 and 3 quarter inches, half of 10 and 3 quarter is 5 and 3 eighths. So you can come right here and put you a mark at uh, 5 and 3 eighths over here. Come off of the center line, 5 and 3 eighths over here. Double check that, make sure it's 10 and a half, make sure you uh, did the math correctly in your head, 10 and a half inches. Now we connect the dots from there to here, there to here, and we have an equal taper transition. You can do it squarely off of one side, but then you have a, a different type of duck. It's, um, it's much more difficult to make because you have additional measurements, but it's much easier to make an equal taper transition when possible. Right here. So now we're going to put up a one inch stripe down here on the bottom, and off of that intersection right there, the intersection of those two stripe lines, we go up to here. It's just going to be a subtle change in angle but enough to where it's going to be three quarter inch over the course of 24 inches. So we're really only driving in three eighths of an inch on either side. It's a very subtle change in dimension, but enough to where you don't want to have to make that connection with duct tape. Ain't nothing worse than duct tape on a piece of duct. Five eighths to twelve inch, eleven and a half, ten and three quarter. This is the side. This is the top. This is the bottom. We have to uh, poke holes in this with the Whitney punches to allow that to attach to the furnace, and uh, cut our S's for this, and we're ready to uh, ready to install. Well, we went far enough on this one here. We just had a, uh, a simple, short, two-way transition to uh, go from the, the discharge of the furnace to the, uh, to the short trunk line that's going to go in this attic. And then also just a, an auxiliary drain pan for going underneath the, uh, underneath the unit up in the attic uh, to minimize the potential for, for sealing damage. So next one, next we're going to be real simple too. It's going to be straight duct, straight duct and a different type or a variation on a return air plenum. So you know what? For now, this is Tractor Man 44, and I am out of here.